The Vestal Virgins, Keepers of the Flame in Ancient Rome In the heart of ancient Rome, amid the grandeur of the Roman Empire, an institution flourished that combined spirituality, tradition, and female empowerment. The Vestal Virgins, also known as the Vestales or Vestal Priestesses, were a unique group of women who played a vital role in Roman religious life for centuries. These priestesses were entrusted with the sacred duty of tending to the eternal flame of Vesta, the goddess of the hearth and home, and their story is a fascinating chapter in the history of ancient Rome. The Origins of the Vestal Virgins The origins of the Vestal Virgins are shrouded in the mists of time. According to Roman mythology, the Vestal Virgins were founded by Numa Pompilius, the second king of Rome, around 713 BC. Numa was said to have established the order of the Vestal Virgins as a way to appease the goddess Vesta and ensure the prosperity and stability of Rome. He appointed the first Vestal Virgins to serve as the guardians of the sacred fire. The Role and Duties of the Vestal Virgins The primary role of the Vestal Virgins was to maintain and protect the sacred fire of Vesta, which symbolized the heart of the Roman state and the continuity of the city. The fire was never allowed to go out, as its extinction was believed to be a bad omen for Rome. The Vestales were responsible for keeping this flame alive, and they did so with great dedication. In addition to tending the sacred fire, the Vestal Virgins had other important duties. They were tasked with preparing food for certain religious ceremonies, such as the Perilia, an agricultural festival celebrating the birth of Rome. The priestesses also played a key role in the important festival of Vestalia, dedicated to the goddess Vesta during which they would make a special offering of mola salsa, a mixture of salt and wheat, to purify the sacred fire and the city. The Vestal Virgins were considered the embodiment of purity and virtue, and their chastity was central to their role. They took a vow of celibacy that lasted for 30 years, during which they were expected to remain chaste. Violating this vow was considered a severe offense, as it was believed that any impurity in the Vestales would bring disaster upon Rome. The punishment for breaking their vow of celibacy was severe, often resulting in death by burial alive. Selection and Training of Vestal Virgins Becoming a Vestal Virgin was an honor and a significant responsibility. Candidates were usually selected from among noble Roman families, and they had to meet strict criteria. They had to be between the ages of 6 and 10, physically and mentally sound, and with both parents still alive. The selection process involved a complex ritual, and once chosen, the Vestal Virgins were taken from their families and brought to the House of the Vestals, a grand temple in the Roman Forum, where they would spend the entirety of their 30-year service. The training of the Vestal Virgins was rigorous, and they were educated in various aspects of religious rituals and duties. They also learned to read and write, which was a rare privilege for women in ancient Rome. Their status was highly respected, and they were treated with great reverence by the Roman populace. Legacy and Decline The Vestal Virgins and their sacred fire were associated with the protection and prosperity of Rome. As such, they played an essential role in the religious life of the Roman Republic and later the Roman Empire. Their dedication and service were highly valued, and they were provided with certain privileges and exemptions from some societal norms. However, as the Roman Empire evolved, the importance of the Vestal Virgins diminished. The rise of Christianity in the late Roman Empire, with its emphasis on celibacy and purity, challenged the Vestales' role and eventually led to their decline. The last known Vestal Virgin served in the early 4th century AD, and the order was officially disbanded in 394 AD when Emperor Theodosius I suppressed pagan practices, the Vestal Virgins left behind a legacy that showcases the significance of women in ancient Rome and their role in religious life. Their unique position allowed them to receive an education and maintain a respected status. That was exceptional for women of their time. The institution of the Vestal Virgins serves as a testament to the complex and multifaceted nature of ancient Roman society, where tradition, religion, and gender roles intertwined in intriguing ways. Today, the Vestal Virgins stand as an enduring symbol of the rich tapestry of Roman history, where spirituality, tradition, and female empowerment converged to create a unique and fascinating chapter in the story of ancient Rome.
The Vestal Virgins played a pivotal role in ancient Rome within the broader context of the Roman Empire. A vast and complex civilization that spanned several centuries. To understand the significance of the Vestal Virgins and their role, it is essential to consider the historical background of the Roman Empire and its religious traditions. If you found value so far in this video please give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe to support this channel, it will be appreciated. Please share across social media platforms to reach a wider audience. The Roman Empire, an overview. The Roman Empire, which emerged from the Roman Republic, was one of the most influential and enduring civilizations in history. It existed for over a millennium, from the founding of Rome in 753 BC to the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD. At its zenith, the Roman Empire extended across three continents, covering modern-day Europe, Africa, and parts of Asia. Rome's political, military, and cultural influence left an indelible mark on the world. The Roman Empire was characterized by its vast territorial expansion, sophisticated legal and administrative systems, and intricate social hierarchy. The government was led by emperors who wielded both military and political power. And the empire was divided into provinces, each governed by appointed officials. Roman society was stratified, with a small aristocracy at the top, a burgeoning middle class, and a large population of slaves. Religion in Ancient Rome Religion played an integral role in Roman society, and the Romans were known for their religious syncretism. Incorporating and adapting gods and religious practices from conquered regions into their pantheon. The Roman state religion was polytheistic, with various gods and goddesses serving specific roles and functions. Each deity was associated with different aspects of life, from agriculture to warfare. And the worship of these gods played a crucial role in daily life, politics, and governance. The Roman people believed that their success, prosperity, and well-being were closely linked to the favor of the gods. To maintain this favor, the Romans conducted elaborate religious ceremonies and rituals. The Vestal Virgins, in this context, were responsible for maintaining the sacred fire of Vesta, the goddess of the hearth and home. The perpetuity of this flame was seen as a symbol of Rome's continued existence and prosperity. The Vestal Virgins in the Roman Empire The Vestal Virgins were central to the religious life of ancient Rome. Serving as guardians of the sacred fire and symbolizing the purity and continuity of the Roman state. Their unique status within Roman society was reflective of the significance of religious devotion in the empire. As the Roman Empire expanded, its religious landscape evolved. Incorporating various deities and religious traditions from the regions it conquered. This diversity was accommodated, rather than suppressed, and the Vestal Virgins, as guardians of the sacred flame, embodied the essence of Roman syncretism. The role of the Vestal Virgins persisted throughout the Roman Republic and into the early years of the Roman Empire, showcasing the durability of Roman traditions and the importance of upholding religious practices. To ensure the stability of the state, their vow of celibacy and their role as educators further demonstrated the influence and esteem of this priestesshood in Roman society. The Decline of the Vestal Virgins the decline of the Vestal Virgins was intertwined with the broader changes occurring in the Roman Empire. The rise of Christianity, with its emphasis on celibacy and purity, posed a direct challenge to the Vestales' role and the polytheistic Roman religious tradition. As Christianity became the dominant religion in the Roman Empire, pagan practices and institutions, like the Vestal Virgins were gradually suppressed and ultimately dissolved. The last known Vestal Virgin served in the early 4th century AD, and in 394 AD. Emperor Theodosius I officially abolished the Vestal Virgins and other pagan practices. The vestiges of the ancient Roman world were fading, giving way to a new religious and cultural order. The Vestal Virgins, as an institution and symbol of Roman religious life, were an integral part of the Roman Empire's rich tapestry. They represented the complex interplay of religion, tradition, and gender roles in ancient Rome. Their role in tending to the sacred fire of Vesta not only signified the importance of the hearth in Roman culture, but also served as a tangible link between the divine and the worldly aspects of the empire. 
The decline of the Vestal Virgins marked the end of an era and the dawn of a new religious landscape in the Roman world. But their legacy endures as a testament to the intricate and multifaceted nature of ancient Roman society. The decline of the Vestal Virgins and the rise of Christianity. The Vestal Virgins, with their sacred flame and role as guardians of the Roman state's spiritual hearth, had a profound impact on ancient Rome for centuries. However, their eventual decline was closely tied to the rise of Christianity which heralded significant cultural and religious transformations within the Roman Empire. The role of Christianity in the decline of the Vestal Virgins. The emergence and spread of Christianity had a transformative effect on the religious landscape of the Roman Empire. In the early days of the Christian faith, Christians were often marginalized and persecuted. However, with the conversion of Emperor Constantine the Great to Christianity in the early 4th century AD, and the subsequent Edict of Milan in 313 AD, which granted religious tolerance. The status of Christianity began to change dramatically. Christianity's emphasis on monotheism and a single, transcendent deity stood in stark contrast to the Roman polytheistic tradition. The Christian message of salvation and the promise of eternal life drew many adherents. And the new faith offered a compelling alternative to the traditional Roman gods and goddesses. The moral and ethical teachings of Christianity, including celibacy and chastity, challenged the traditional Roman religious practices and societal norms, including the role of the Vestal Virgins. The impact on Roman religious practices. The spread of Christianity in the Roman Empire brought about a shift in religious practices and a subsequent decline in the importance of the Vestal Virgins. As Christianity gained momentum, it was seen as a direct challenge to the traditional Roman gods and goddesses, including Vesta, whom the Vestal Virgins served. The Roman state's official religion began to wane, and the Christian faith, with its growing influence, increasingly marginalized and marginalized the traditional Roman religious practices. In this changing religious landscape, the role of the Vestal Virgins as keepers of the sacred fire and symbols of the Roman state's continuity lost its significance. The traditional religious institutions were no longer central to the Roman identity. As many Romans were turning to Christianity for spiritual guidance and solace. The suppression of pagan practices. The decline of the Vestal Virgins was further accelerated by the actions of Christian emperors, particularly Theodosius I, who took measures to suppress pagan practices. In 391 AD, Theodosius issued the Theodosian Decrees, which sought to suppress pagan rituals and promote Christianity as the state religion. Temples were closed, and the Vestal Virgins, along with other pagan priesthoods, were disbanded. As a result, the Vestal Virgins, who had played a crucial role in the continuity and prosperity of Rome for centuries, saw their institution abolished. The sacred fire of Vesta, which had been tended for generations, was extinguished legacy and significance. The decline of the Vestal Virgins marked a pivotal moment in Roman history, signifying the end of a long-standing religious tradition and the rise of Christianity as the dominant faith. While the Vestal Virgins were no longer needed to ensure the eternal flame and the continuity of Rome, their legacy endures as a testament to the shifting cultural and religious dynamics of the Roman Empire. The rise of Christianity not only transformed religious practices but also had a profound impact on the course of Western history. Over time, Christianity became the state religion, and the Roman Empire was transformed into the Byzantine Empire. With its capital in Constantinople, modern-day Istanbul, the Vestal Virgins became a relic of a bygone era, a symbol of the rich and complex religious tapestry of ancient Rome. The decline of the Vestal Virgins and the rise of Christianity in the Roman Empire were intricately connected. The embrace of a new faith and the ensuing suppression of traditional religious practices marked a significant turning point in Roman history and shaped the subsequent course of Western civilization. The legacy of the Vestal Virgins continues to serve as a reminder of the profound cultural and religious changes that unfolded in the transition from the ancient Roman world to the Christian Byzantine Empire. The selection and training process for Vestal Virgins in ancient Rome was a highly ritualistic and demanding procedure, and the consequences for breaking their vow of celibacy were severe. 
Selection Process 1. Eligibility Potential candidates for the role of Vestal Virgin were typically girls between the ages of 6 and 10, who came from noble Roman families. They were required to have both parents alive at the time of their selection, which was intended to symbolize purity and continuity. 2. Appointment The selection process was conducted by the chief priest, the Pontifex Maximus. Candidates were chosen based on their physical and mental fitness, as well as their family's social standing. The final selection was considered an auspicious act, as the chosen girl was believed to be the one destined by the goddess Vesta. 3. Vestal Oath Once selected, the young girls had to undergo a sacred oath of celibacy, vowing to remain chaste for 30 years. The oath was a solemn and binding commitment, and any violation was believed to bring dire consequences. Training 1. Education The Vestal Virgins received extensive education, which was a rarity for Roman women at the time. They learned to read and write, study the various religious rituals, and develop a deep understanding of the sacred traditions they were entrusted with. 2. Religious Duties Vestal Virgins were trained in the meticulous rituals and ceremonies associated with the worship of Vesta and other deities. They learned how to perform the rites and maintain the sacred fire, which was their primary duty. 3. Secrecy. They were also trained to keep certain religious knowledge and practices secret. As revealing these secrets was considered sacrilegious. Consequences of breaking the vow of celibacy. The Vestal Virgin's vow of celibacy was a fundamental aspect of their role and the institution itself. If a Vestal Virgin broke this vow, it was seen as a grave offense, as it was believed to endanger the purity of the sacred fire and the prosperity of Rome. The consequences for breaking their vow of celibacy were severe and designed to serve as a deterrent. 1. Punishment. Violating their vow of celibacy was considered a capital offense. The punishment for Vestal Virgins who engaged in sexual relations or violated their chastity was severe. They were subjected to a public trial before the Pontifex Maximus and, if found guilty, were sentenced to a painful and humiliating execution. 2. Execution. The most common method of execution for Vestal Virgins who broke their vow was burial alive. The guilty priestess would be placed in a subterranean chamber with a small amount of food and water, a lamp, and a bed. The chamber would be sealed, effectively entombing the Vestal Virgin alive. This was considered a form of divine punishment and a way to maintain the purity of the Roman state. 3. Atonement. Occasionally, Vestal virgins who were accused of breaking their vow would be acquitted. This might occur if it was believed that the accusation was false or if there were extenuating circumstances. In such cases, the accused priestess would be allowed to go free, although her reputation would likely be tarnished. The severity of the consequences highlights the importance of the Vestal Virgin's chastity to the Romans, and their belief in the connection between the priestess's purity and the well-being of the state. While there are records of Vestal Virgins being accused of breaking their vows, such cases were relatively rare, likely due to the strict training and the dire consequences that awaited those who strayed from their sacred commitment. If you enjoy this video please give it a thumbs up, like and subscribe to our channel for more self-improvement videos. Comment below to tell us how useful you found this video. Don't forget to share on various social media platforms to reach a wider audience. Click the notification bell to get notified anytime we post a new video. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video.